Hi, my name is Will Gadd, and I'm going to talk about just your basic ice climbing cycle. How you move up steep water ice with the least amount of effort possible. Because that's what it's all about, is making it fun and easy. There's a basic movement pattern that gets done over and over and over again when you're steep ice climbing. And by steep, I mean anything over about 65, 70 degrees. That's steep. The same principles apply to any angle of ice climbing, but especially for steep ice climbing, what you want to do is make it easy. That's the goal. And if you've got this basic pattern figured out, ice climbing gets a lot easier. Here's what it looks like. Walk up to the ice, hello ice. Reach up, do your swing, bang, it's in. And you push away from the ice a little bit. Look down, now you can see your feet. This arm is still straight. You just created space to move. Butt out, feet come up, feet come up, until your femurs are roughly, you know, anywhere from sort of 80 or so degrees. Now you're nice and stable. You've got two good feet. Where are you gonna go? You stand up. If your femurs were in the right place, then your elbow comes right into your chest. This tool is down here, and it's easy to take out because you just lift up on the handle hard. It comes out, your hips go into the ice because to swing, your chest needs to come out. If your chest doesn't come out and you're in against the ice like this, it's just like trying to kick. You can't do it. So your chest has to come out, hips go in, swing, boom. Butt out, look down at your feet, bring them up. Elbow comes right in, stand up, rip, bang, off you go. That's it. But learning how to do that well has literally taken me 20 years, and I'm still figuring out refinements on it. But that's your basic pattern. And you can think of it as your body going from here, when you just get that upper tool in, out to here, it kind of makes a C. And then you bring your feet up, stand up, rip, and then your body makes a C the other way. I'm kind of over exaggerating a bit, but your hips come out or come in, your hips come in, shoulders come out, the hips come out, shoulders come in, and that's your basic cycle all the way up the climb. So looking where I'm gonna swing for a good spot, and uh, right there is pretty good, so I'll start with that, it's already been swung into. So now I'm, uh, I'm in my sag position. Each foot is unweighted, each time I move it, so my hips are going back and forth to unweight my feet. And then when I stand up, I'm gonna look. Yeah, I think I can go to about that piece up there. My femurs are about 90. Stand up, hips come into the ice, reach up, oh yeah. <sighs> hips come out, I'm in my sag, everything's quite loose. There's a good foothold. There's a good foothold, stand up. And this is easy, I'm, all my weight's on my feet. If you leave your hips out away from the ice, now you're having to use your biceps, it's hard. Get your hips in, oh, that's so much nicer. And I'm gonna go out here. Now I pull up and man, it sucks. I'm, my, my whole body's going like that, uh, this is no fun. So I come back down into the sag, move my feet over. Ah, oh, so much better. But fix problems in the sag. This is where you fix things. If I'm here and I'm like, ah, I'm so out of balance, but I'll just swing this tool. Ah, oh, now I'm on a bent arm because I couldn't reach because I wasn't in balance over here. Okay, it's strenuous as hell, and I can't move my feet because I've already pulled into the ice. If I want to move my feet, the butt's got to come out. I got to be able to look, see. To move your feet well, you've got to move your hips over and then lift the other one up. Now you're not trying to hop. If you don't weight transfer, then you end up hopping, and it's just kind of it looks like the 80s, it's not good. Weight transfer, then you can kick your other foot in. Weight transfer, kick your other one in. That's really critical. If you don't unweight the thing you wanna move, then you'll have to hop it and you will not get good feet. 
the wider you get your, your feet, the more you're going to end up hopping and the harder it is to actually be balanced. You want your feet about shoulder width apart most of the time. There are times when you want to be in the splits. Like everything in life, there is no one way to do it. But if you're having to hop your feet, most of the time it's because your feet are too far apart and not basically in line with your shoulders. Same with your tools. You want your tools staggered vertically so that your elbow is nice and locked off in your armpit here like that. And the other one is at full extension because that makes it easy to swing well. If, you are, if your tools are out here, then you end up chicken winging and it's really hard. The classic novice error is to put both tools in about there, pull up. Now, no matter which tool you take out, you're barn dooring. There's a muscle in your back right here called the rhomboids. And it attaches your scapula to your spine. And if you feel that muscle firing and you're all out of balance and it feels awkward, 90% of the time it's because you've placed your tools side by side, slightly wider than shoulder width. And again, no matter which one you take out, you're going to be in a barn door position. Whereas if you place them in line vertically, then when you pull up, you're in this nice triangular position and you're stable. Things are good. If you feel out of balance when you pulled up onto your ice tool, it's almost always because your feet are to one side or the other of your midline. And how you fix that is go back into the sag position here, walk your feet back underneath your ice tool, then stand up. Now you're in this roughly triangular position and it's nice and stable. Just doing this is, is, is hard for people to learn. Everybody's natural reaction when they have a, a tool is to pull in. And then as soon as you pull in, you can't kick effectively. It's impossible to unweight your feet well. It just does not work. Cool. So a couple common errors. You get a nice tool in, and then you pull in. Notice that my arm is bending, and my waist is already close to the ice. I can't see my feet, no matter what I do, because I've already pulled in. So I'll go back to the sag. Now I can see my feet. Oh, that's where the footholds are. Bring them up. But I would say that 80% of the people out there, as soon as they get an ice tool, they, they pull in and, and then they end up with their feet like this because that's the only way they can get them into the ice. So they end up kind of spread out like that. Incredibly strenuous versus... Oh. So pulling in right away is the first error. All of these things work together. If your butt's not out, you can't kick. It just doesn't work. If your feet are too far apart, you end up hopping your feet, and that doesn't work. All of this goes together. Another common error is getting the femurs too high. So if you get your, if you get your feet too high, you get them up like this, you're like super rad. But then when you stand up, your elbow comes past your rib cage like this, and you're pulling out on the tip of this tool, and it tends to pop out, which is exciting. So you don't want to get your femurs past about 90. 90 is about as far as you go generally. If you get your femurs too high, then when you pull in and lock off, you're locking off back here, and it's really strenuous, and you're also pulling out on the, on the pick of your ice tool, which is not good. Right about there is where you want to end up with it. If you've done your sag, you got everything organized, you stand up, and you're like, oh, my hand could be higher. You bump up to here. Now what you're starting to do is pull out. The angle of pull on that tip is quite high. If you put your feet in the right position, when you stand up, your arm comes in. I don't need to go any higher on this tool. Most people who are bumping their hand like that, they haven't gotten their feet high enough to begin with. And if they had and they stood up, now they're pulling out on the tool and it's really strenuous versus just having it in the right position, bang. So I very seldom move ice climbing off the upper grip. Generally, if you're on the upper grip and you're moving ice climbing, you're, you're in my view, kind of actually doing it less than optimally. I'm not gonna say wrong. There are times when it makes sense. It always depends in every form of climbing, but most of the time you wanna be moving on the lower grip. Quick speed technique too, or, or Quick safety technique, if you're going to match hands on the tool, don't reach up and grab on the upper grip because then when you stand up, you're going to have that outward angle of pull. Reach up to the upper grip, then grab the lower grip. Now you're nice and organized. When you stand up, 
you'll have that good angle of pull down on the on the tip versus out. Again, I'm locked on. You know, I'm high, I'm bouldering, but if I fall off right now, I'm probably gonna break my ankles badly. So do this on a top rope, and you know, until you get really, really comfortable and solid. If I were leading, I'd still have a screw there. I'd still hit the ledge, probably break my ankles. You gotta get good sticks and good feet and be in balance ice climbing to be safe. It's really important. <laughs> 